What's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Bolton, joined by Detective Bolton. Clint, how are you? I'm good. In today's episode, I wanted to talk about one of the quickest ways that we can give back to our communities. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. Now, the reason that I think this is so important, it's not for the ambition of wanting to volunteer, so to speak. Instead, it's for the identification of how important it is for us to have the ability to do something for somebody else without any regard or or desire to get anything in return, but simply for the fact that it makes us feel better, even better than it does for the person receiving the thing that we're doing for them. And I want to give an example, an unexpected example of this today. And Clinton, you and I have tenants inside of a house that have lived there since 2018. And despite waving every time that we go to my dad's, because my dad lives next door to that house that we rent, we've never actually met the tenants that live there. And I needed to go to that property so that I could take a picture of the water heater because I needed to do a self-inspection on that house that's required by this great city that we live in, which I also have to pay them to do myself, which makes a whole lot of sense. And my management company couldn't get a hold of them, so my dad and I decided to just go, and then hopefully we could take a picture. And so he, the gentleman answers the door, and he lets us inside. And you could tell that they're so nervous because they are from Vietnam, and the there's a quite an English language barrier between us. And I, I got the impression that they were worried that if we saw something they didn't want us to see, that they thought that they were going to get into trouble. And of course, I could give two shits less. These are great tenants. They've been there. They've never missed a payment, you know, even despite increasing the rent on that house. And so we went through the house. I took a picture of the water heater. And then all of us, including his wife and my dad, end up pausing in the kitchen. And to break the ice a little bit, I look over at the door We have it set up to where you close a door that goes into the laundry room and like a really awesome mud room in that house. And I see on the door that there's some words of affirmation handwritten and taped as though you were to laminate the piece of paper and stuck to the door. And I also noticed that this wasn't written by a child. And I smile at it and everybody kind of pauses wondering what I'm smiling at. And I said, I like that. And I blatantly pointed to the writing that was on the door. And to help to ease some of the tension, I just started reading it out loud. And these are words along the lines of, I am strong. I will work hard. I am brave. I can do better. And I read the whole entire thing aloud to everybody. And that eases the tension almost immediately. And I'm sharing that part of this story because it eased the tension so much to the extent that these you know, tenants, but essentially strangers now felt comfortable enough to be able to open up about a situation that has been taking place with their son. And their son is 35 years old. And evidently, one year ago, he was drinking. And the story as I received it was that something happened and his blood pressure went incredibly high. And he ended up passing out. And he's been in essentially what she compared to hospice care ever since. And this hospice care is about two and a half hours with traffic Mm -hmm. away from where she lives. And so he has a trach and she was, she was trying so hard to be able to tell me and she's, she's struggling with her English. But one of my fortes in life is to practice incredible patience. And I had no problem taking my time trying to understand what she was sharing And she was telling me that she's been trying for a long time to get him transferred somewhere closer because he's so far away. And in the midst of this conversation, she also shared with me that that she's actually lost a son before. And she has uh, another daughter. She lives out of state and, you know, or I'm sorry, out of the country, actually. And so she's sharing so much with me about just some of the struggles that she's faced. But most importantly, the struggle she's facing in current time with not being able to see her son. 
I don't think that either she nor her husband drive even. So imagine the difficulty to just be able to go and visit her son, who also has a feeding tube at this point, and he's suffered, it sounds like, a lot of respiratory and neurological problems after the fact. And he's in very poor condition, but he's alive, and they needed help. And I worked in the medical field for 14 years. And so everything she's asking, these are very simple things somebody should be helping them with. And it blew my mind that she doesn't have a point of reference, an advocate, somebody, you know, a caseworker is usually assigned from your insurance company and or the facility that the patient is at. And so I was asking about his insurance, got his insurance information. And long story short, I told them I'm going to help you because all she needed, all she needed was a list of some local facilities that would take his insurance. That's literally the only thing that the other facility asked for. And because they don't speak English, because they probably don't even own a cell phone, because they're, you know, they they don't look like the type of family that has more than they need, they needed help with this one simple task. And for whatever reason, they're surviving children, they haven't helped them. And so I told them, like, I can do this and I will help you. So I went home and I got a list and I printed it out and then I ended up giving it to my dad who gave it to them. And they were incredibly thankful for that one simple gesture. And I was quite emotional. There's there's quite more vivid details that I won't go into on this episode. But Clint, when I shared this story, it, it was very touching to me. I became very emotional when sharing it with you. And so a, a lot of the reason why is because I had been gifted the opportunity of being able to help somebody so unexpectedly. And it got me thinking about how little it takes to be able to do something that could be so impactful in somebody else's life and how many opportunities exist around us for us to be able to give in that way and to be able to give that isn't in the the formal sense that we're used to, right? And not to say those are, I'm not to discredit any of those. I'm not saying that you know, going and helping at a shelter or volunteering your time at a particular facility or whatever your thing is, I'm not discrediting that at all. However, I think that we need to stop thinking so broadly sometimes and maybe focus more on some of the things that we could be doing that are even closer to home. And by doing that, I think it's also a little bit more fulfilling. Like my heart is so warm now at the thought of being able to go to my dad's and now seeing them and like actually knowing who I'm waving to this time. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's no matter how big or small these acts of kindness that you do, uh, it's, it's, you do it without a, any expectation or anything that, you, that you're feeling almost entitled to them giving you something in return. You're doing this out of the kindness of your heart and just because you want to help. And and it's like that that show, and I and I love this term. I'm hearing it so much more now because I I probably love it so much. It's just asking someone, "How can I help?" Like just asking those simple words can completely change everything. And I mean, they might say, "Oh, you don't need to do anything," or they could say, "You just sitting here listening to me changed it all." Like, thank you. Like, there's so much you can do. If you just start asking that question more, how can I help to anyone that you feel that you need to? Or being the assertive person that I am, like, you know, inserting yourself, like Mm -hmm. it's almost as though like nobody else could do what they needed done except for me. And that's why I had to be there in that moment. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? No. Yeah. Like it it was nothing for me. Like I knew exactly how to be able to cross reference their insurance with the type of facility that they were looking for and had to be a high profile because, you know, their son has a trach and all of these things. And so it's beautiful when the universe works in that way, but even more beautiful when you're able to identify it, I think. Yeah. And and that kind of goes back to the episode of we discussed after our, our vacation earlier this year on the cruise, it's everything happens for a reason and, and meeting certain people while on the cruise and, and discussing, you know, their lives and, and, and just clarifying based off of my own experience or uh, Ashley's own experience and, and being able to be there to hold space for them and then share, okay, I see what you're saying with this, but the reality is, is X, Y, Z. So it's something that I think we really, 
like I, I love, like we give back to the community in any way that you possibly can. And that doesn't mean you're going out to the parks and picking up trash or going and serving soup at a soup kitchen or like whatever it may be. It's, it's just, you give back to where you see fit. Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't have to have to follow in that same standard mold that you think of when you think of volunteer work, for example. I hope you've gotten some value out of today's episode. I hope you can find a way to give directly back to your community sometime soon. And if you have gotten value, do us a favor, drop a review, subscribe down below. And as always, know that I'm sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.